So hey everyone, welcome to the channel as always. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich and I'm the channel host. And if you can't tell, we mostly talk about drones and imaging, building our small drone businesses and all the things that go into that. Today, I wanted to talk a bit about autonomous flight apps. If you've been a regular on this channel, you know I'm always talking about autonomous flight apps to do some of our jobs. The big question, the big you know truth behind all of this do you need to use autonomous flight apps? No, no, you don't need to. But if you want to do the kind of work that we do here at Arizona Drone, then by all means, yes, you're going to need to utilize some autonomous flight apps. Now, the autonomous flight apps are very important to me because we do a lot of construction progression work and we need to repeat the same flights over and over again. We need to go from this waypoint to the next one to the next one and they need to be pretty much spot on with the previous flight that was done so that we can show the changes in the property. Like what you're seeing up here on screen right now, this is the Solstice Project. It was a set of flights that we did recently and as we scroll down here we actually have a video in here that traces along the upper level area of the solstice project showing the changes in the new home construction over time so it gives people a feel for are we on schedule are we behind schedule and this same flight path is achieved by utilizing one of many autonomous flight apps in the case of this one I am going to, let's shrink me, get me off the screen. So let's go ahead and check out the Litchi Mission Hub. So for this particular flight, I'll go back over to Solstice and this flight goes around the construction area. And if we go look at my Litchi Mission Hub, I have Litchi installed on my iPhones and I utilize them for controlling some of these flights. And so as you can see, we've got some waypoints going along here that uh, we marked out when we first started this project and the drone flies a very specific flight path. I can refly that path again and again and again to achieve very similar results so that we can show that kind of time lapsing. So Litchi Mission Hub, Litchi itself is one of the uh, applications we use along with MapPilot Pro and of course also Drone Harmony. So right here we actually have a blocked out flight area for doing a two-dimensional model with Drone Harmony. So this is another autonomous flight up. It has different positives and negatives compared to Litchi or compared to MapPilot Pro or Measure Ground Control. There are so many different flight apps out there, but Drone Harmony is one of the other ones that we use on a regular basis. So when we go back and take a look at that Solstice project, if we scroll down below to our before and after ortho mosaic models, so this is to show the construction folks what has changed, when it has changed, and with each of our flights we do this, and that is following the path that we have for the solstice project here. So this path, actually we've got another path where we fly it at uh, over 200 feet. Um, and that's the path that we really use, but we can make multiple paths and multiple setups with Drone Harmony as well as with Litchi and MapPilot Pro. But in the end, if I go to a job site and I just go fly and I'm not using autonomous flight apps, maybe we're just getting some still images, maybe we're getting some video, that's fine. You don't have to do the rest of this. You don't have to utilize autonomous flight apps. But if you want repeatable flights that yield similar results each time over and over again, you're going to want to take a look seriously at what third-party flight app can do these things for you. Now, we talk a lot about this over on our classes.azdrone.net. We cover specific... Uh, we cover specific autonomous flight applications, and then we cover some autonomous flight apps as a group. All of these things offer a similar, uh, similar items. I'm just scrolling down here so that you can see some of the classes we have in here. So utilizing Ground Station Pro, Ground Station Pro is going away. Um, they're actually discontinuing that. We have an entire class just about autonomous flight apps. And then we have some specific flight apps like the MapPilot Pro and Litchi as well. So if you want to check that out over at classes.azdrone.net. Now, we do actually fly around these projects manually as well. And we do also include still image galleries for our clients as well so that they can see some different angles and get a feel for things. So we're not always following a specific flight path when we're doing these types of still images for the client. Sometimes we're doing some random images just to highlight key features and key changes as well. 
there. I don't have to have that flight app um, running everything for me, but I could as well. You can set up a flight app to take a photo at every single one of your waypoints. And that is very helpful and useful over time to have images that match up with previous images, just changes that have occurred. So the truth about autonomous flight apps, 100%, you do not have to use them at all. If you're out doing, uh, you know, more cinematography, still photos for fun, those types of things, not necessary. But it's that moment when you come to realize that you need some repeatable flight paths, that's when it becomes very important. Also, what drone you buy is very important as well. Does it come with autonomous flight apps? Are there third-party autonomous flight apps? And I say that because there are some other drones on the market other than just DJI, which is what we primarily use here. And those drones are great, like, you know, the Autel Evo. I've got friends who have that drone. Fantastic, beautiful image results. And they do have some automated waypoint tools for them as well. But when you look out at the, um, at the uh, whole landscape, of, um, of drone flight, you'll find most autonomous flight apps have been built for DJI drones. Now, those types of things are changing because a lot of DJI's newest releases didn't release the SDKs, so these third-party app developers cannot make new apps for you. So when you're making a purchasing decision, you might come down to, well, I'd like to utilize DJI drone and I'd like to utilize one of these third party apps. Well, now that's getting more complex too. And you need to do some research before you make that purchase of the Mavic 3 Classic or the Mavic 3 Cinema or the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Um, you need to know, can I actually make waypoint missions with this? Is it a function built into the drone and the controller as it is today? Is it a third-party app? Or can I just not do it? And mostly I'm just going to be doing manual flights now instead of waypoint-style missions. So before you make any purchasing decisions, ask yourself, number one, are these types of flight apps necessary? If yes, number two, what types of drones have access to third-party applications like the ones that we quickly saw here? And then number three, what's what's coming up in the future are there new drones coming out from different manufacturers is dji going to change their mind on the sdks and maybe we'll see some more third-party apps for the newest series of dji drones we don't know but do your research read around and see what other drone operators are using because while you don't have to use third-party flight apps for autonomous flight you might just want to down the road